Yo, what up everyone? Today I got another solo guide for you guys. After my sniper guide, I thought it's time to add the shotguns to the series. I personally prefer shotguns as a solo player because it allows me to take control of a fight and in general be in control of how a fight turns out. Meanwhile as a sniper, I am more reactive and I am playing off my enemy's mistakes. In this video I will give you guys a shotgun and secondary tier list from my point of view. A general loadout talk, we will talk about strategies and then end the video on some gameplay commentary as usual. To give you guys a better understanding of what to do as a solo and how I approach my games as a shotgun player. Alright, let's jump into the tier list. First we're gonna talk about shotguns. As a little information beforehand, me as a solo player, I prefer fire rate over anything because like you just saw in that little video running in the background. Sometimes you need to take out one, two, maybe even three opponents within like a short span of time. That means there is not much time to reload or to like recharge your egg pump action shotgun. So for me fire rate is the most important stat, just so you know when we are going into this tier list. The first shotgun we're taking a look at is the rival. I personally put it in the A category simply for two reasons. It does have a very fast fire rate. It's like the two shots back to back. After that you have to reload, which makes it for me a very solid shotgun. It's also fairly cheap, so it is in the budget category, but it's not enough to put it into the S tier like other shotguns. The next shotgun is the Romero Alamo. I personally put it into or in between the C and D tier, simply because it has a fairly slow fire rate. It has a fairly clunky mechanic that means if you interrupt the reloading process at any point in time until it's fully done you have to do the whole animation again. So I just can't justify it putting it any higher than in between the C and D tier. It's a shotgun it works but you are better off using other shotguns in my opinion. The next shotgun is the Crowning King which in my opinion is just a solid S tier no matter what. Yes, sometimes the crown is inconsistent, but so are all other shotguns. But simply the fact that you can shoot five times in a row in very quick succession will allow you to do some plays that you can't do with any other shotgun. So it is expensive, but definitely worth its price and it deserves the S tier. Now we have the Romero Talon, which in my opinion is not a bad shotgun, but it's not gonna make it any higher than the D tier, simply because as a solo player, shooting once and then having to reload while fighting teams of two or three will end up killing you a lot, especially if you don't even kill the first opponent you're shooting at. So yeah, it's not bad, play the Romero if you like to, but there are definitely better alternatives. Now we're gonna continue with the normal Romero, honestly it's the exact same as the Romero Talon. I guess the only advantage that the Romero Talon has is that you can use it like an axe to kill bosses, but apart from that, exact same shotgun, exact same rank, D tier. Now we have the Slate, honestly a very solid pick, I'm gonna put it into the B tier, simply because of fire rate. It doesn't require any traits, which is a huge benefit, but since it has like the little pump action animation in between shots, I cannot justify it, putting it at the same tier as a rival or a crown, so it's going into the B tier. Next up we have the Spectre, the Spectre is basically the counterpart to the Slate, so it's going into the B tier as well, but the difference between the two shotguns is that the Spectre has a more tight spread due to it being a longer barrel. Generally speaking, the longer the barrel on the shotgun, the more tight the spread is. You see it on the Romero for example, very tight spread pattern. But it has a slower fire rate and it does require bullet grubber in comparison to the Slate, so it remains in the B tier together with the Slate. Okay, last but not least, we do have the Terminus. Yes, there's two pictures, but let me explain. In my opinion, the Terminus in combination with Levering is just as good as a Crowning King, maybe even better, since it has insanely high fire rate, you get a lot of reserve ammo, overall very solid pick, it's kinda cheap, but it requires a trade. But on the other hand, if you do not have Levering, the Terminus drops all the way down between the C and D tier, the same as the Alamo in my opinion because it has insanely low fire rate and honestly I couldn't justify picking it unless I have levering over most other shotguns. So yeah, we got S, 
and C and D tier for the terminals. Little bit confusing, but I hope my explanation made sense. Again, just to roll this up, in my opinion, fire rate is the most important stat on a shotgun. And like you can see here in my tier list, that is basically the stat I based my opinion for this tier list on. Now let's look into secondaries. I sped this up a little bit, so we save some time. You see my whole tier list here. The general thought process is that you want some harmony in your loadout while playing shotguns. That means pistols which will enable you to play at medium distance. This can either be done by packing a punch, having high velocity or a very good fire rate. Pistols are not necessarily there to get your kills at 60 meters. It's nice when it happens of course, but they are there to bring you within shotgun range by tagging your opponents. As a little sports analogy, the pistol is your jab, getting you closer within the enemy range, working on your enemy and your shotgun is your hook, going for the KO. I will highlight some picks in my tier list here just to expand it a little bit further. My good pistols in this category are the uppercut. I put the uppercut between S and A tier because in my opinion the uppercut only becomes S tier if you have really good aim and good experience in this game. Otherwise I cannot justify putting it as high as S tier so I put it in between. Same goes for the Spitfire. In my opinion it's a medium slot uppercut. Has a higher fire rate than the uppercut, a little bit less headshot range, a little bit less velocity, but it gets the job done. Officer, high fire rate, can put on high velocity ammo, really good. The dodge, obviously S tier. A little bit of an underdog here, the new army, honestly really good. Fairly low recoil and you can spam the shit out of your enemies. The brawler goes down, simply because it is worse than the officer, has more sway to it. Then some mentions in the lower tiers here. Conversion and packs, solid picks, but not enough to make it into the A tier. Then, obviously, the Sparks pistol, even though it sounds very interesting since it is long and more deals a lot of damage, but honestly, not a solid pick. You have to hit your shot, and I don't think that's the weapon for a shotgun player. Sometimes it needs that medium, sh uh, medium hit, medium tag, and having to reload after every shot just makes your life more of a pain than it helps, to be completely honest. Apart from that, you can take a look at the list, let me know what you think about it. I think it's kinda fair, I guess like a little surprise here is the Lamat at the B tier. A lot of people say like, oh it's the ideal secondary for a shotgun, but honestly, I have to disagree, it's not bad, but it has fairly low velocity, it does have a little shotgun, but when you have a shotgun already, you don't really wanna like have a second shotgun with low velocity in your secondary slot. But yeah. Let's talk about loadout and strategies. First we're gonna talk about our tools and consumables. We start off with the tools. I personally always like the knuckle knife, but in general equip a melee weapon, pretty much a no-brainer, a med kit, also a no-brainer. Then you have two optional slots. I always like to bring the concertina trip mine and the poison trip mine for the so called death trip mine. But like I said, you can bring anything you like tomahawk, derringer, you know, anything works honestly. Now let's talk about our consumables. I would always equip two vitality shots at the very least. Sometimes you do need that insta heal, especially when you don't have a doctor yet. They are crucial. Wouldn't go without them. Honestly, it's a no brainer. Bring vit shots. Then, for my secondary slot, which also plays into my strategy, which we're going to talk about later, is a sticky bomb to kill bosses. Fairly simple. You're the most vulnerable as a solo shotgun player while killing the boss. So speed up that process, take out the boss fight out, like, out of the equation, bring a sticky bomb, helps a lot. You don't have to, but I made very good experiences with that. Then, we have the region shot, which is in my opinion pretty goaded. You're solo, you're gonna get shot a lot, sometimes you cannot heal or you don't wanna heal, you have a very limited amount of heals, so that region shot can really help you when you get tagged from like 80 meters by a windfield, you can just like continue running, heal up, or sometimes you like trade shots and heal up with a region shot. Then for consumables, like I said, sticky bombs optional, I really like bringing it, but 
also the flash bomb very good if you feel confident in not killing bosses or not needing a sticky bomb the flash bomb is basically a free kill if you kill uh, if you hit your hunter or an enemy then obviously the frag bomb always a solid pick but honestly you can bring whatever you like i just personally recommend bringing a sticky bomb or region shot now let's talk about strategy like you probably heard already I, as a solo shotgun player, love running for the objective, killing the boss, hence why I bring a sticky bomb. On top of that, there are like a bunch of traits which we're gonna talk about now, like Conduit or Serpent, which will help you fight the boss much quicker than anyone else, and thus enable you to like set up your defense before you engage with enemies. Alright, let's talk about traits. On my first rotation I usually buy Doctor, I buy Pack Mule and I buy Necromancer. Pretty obvious why, Doctor for more heals, Necromancer for the self revive, very useful now, honestly a must have. And Pack Mule for the simple reason that it helps you to refill your Doctor med kits, really good combination because of that. On top of that, it refills consumables and tools. Then, if I have points left, I usually go for Magpie. Also has a solo edition since the last patch. 10 seconds of dark side from now on. Super helpful. Then conduit. Conduit gives you 5 minutes of stamina for every clue that you have investigated. Kinda goaded. Again, helps you with like finding the boss quicker than everybody else. In the same category goes serpent. Honestly very strong, especially with a solo edition. Also since the last patch. That it increases your interaction range up to 50 instead of 25 meters so sometimes you don't even have to go into a compound to grab the clue which speeds up the whole boss finding process even more then resilience also worth mentioning really good to like boost your necro value and lightfoot for those clutch lightfoot plays i will later on show you how to use it in some replays after that you can kind of pick whatever you want whatever works honestly gun perks or some more convenient perks just pick whatever you like for example you could pick frontiers man to like get even more heals or maybe quartermaster to like double down on like a medium slot weapon or you know whatever suits you to be completely honest also here as a little side note because people are like but the uh, sticky bomb doesn't work against the assassin blah, 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 blah. actually it does work against the assassin <laughs> and let me show you how little side note here it's kind of recommended to use necromancer because there's a chance of killing yourself but you can do it safely like i do here like here that's how i do it i usually wait at the entrance for the assassin to appear when he does, I throw the sticky bomb at his bottom left or bottom right and then shoot it with my shotgun or pistol. Basically every pellet or every bullet that hits the sticky at the same time causes a separate explosion. Shotguns shoot multiple pellets, multiple explosions. But let's jump into some gameplay commentary and I'll show you guys how I play shotgun. Alright, first thing we're gonna look at is how to use your pistol to enable you to get into shotgun range. It might seem like the hardest part about playing shotgun as a solo player. I know it's very easy once you are at the boss layer, but it's much harder all the way going there and, you know, when you have random fights in the middle of nowhere. But yeah, a quick summary here, like you saw, we are in the middle of a compound fight. I just banished the assassin, but they're all grouped up and there's no way I can get into shotgun range yet, so I have to, like, pick them apart, push them apart, not necessarily kill them, but like spread them out a little bit by tagging them up with my pistol. Like you see, I tag the infected, he has to like get into cover to heal, while the red shirt is still full HP and continues the fight. I see that the dual building player kinda isolated himself from his team, so I try to like get a kill here sadly he's like very slippery and i can't get that 1v1 he gets into safety so i have to like continue rotating here a little bit continue swapping up my angle to get like more tags on his teammates an important thing here is i don't get too focused on one enemy and hold the angle i like move around a little bit and see if one of the three is doing a mistake by maybe holding an angle or you know i can like get the jump on him 
And that worked out perfectly. I get another attack here on the infected. This now enables me to push the red shirt since the infected is healing. So I just jump into the mud since I know I have a 1v1 and can finally get into shotgun range. I continue pushing, trying to finish the fight here. Again, have my uppercut out, get the tag on him. He's low HP. I push and finish him off with my shotgun. Yes, I hit a lot of shots here, but you know, sad truth is, when you play solo as a shotgun player, you need a pistol that you can rely on. It doesn't have to be the uppercut, it's just my best pistol in my opinion. But you need to get at least tags in to like use the time where people heal, where they like split up because they have to heal to like get into 1v1s or at least close distance or rotate and you know do the whole thing again. Now I have another example actually directly after this fight, same match, just to like illustrate you guys how to use your pistol to enable yourself to get into shotgun range. I picked up scan, I see that there are another three enemies at the end of the compound. Here I'm gonna focus on using my uppercut to get into range. I didn't really get a pick here, but it's not necessary. I think this whole play would have worked out even if I wouldn't have gotten this pick here. Now that I got the kill, I'm starting to push. I'm holding the angle, just see if I go for maybe a sneaky revive. I use the compound's natural cover here to like jump around. Overall, as a shotgun player, you will need a lot of combat knowledge, but you see, like I got the kill, they were a little bit scared. One guy's in the mud, one guy's all the way back, so I'm like isolating the closest fight. They tag me, but since I'm in a good position, I can just heal. I get a little bit screwed over by AI here, but you know, it's hard to go down. Now I see that's the guy that was further back. He's on the enemy's body. Get a nasty uppercut headshot here, but again, even if I, you know, wouldn't have killed him here, I could have like instantly pushed with that uppercut tag and would have gotten probably the same result. Now I use my scan and the jumping accuracy on Buckshot to finish the last opponent. Again, that was really quick and I had good accuracy, but you saw how I used my pistol to like push a team. I didn't like stand still after I got a kill or after I got a tag. I constantly used those little like windows that I created, like those time windows where they have to heal or back off, to like get closer and bring myself into a position from where I can use my shotgun. That is basically the secret while playing solo shotgun. Use your uppercut, like I said earlier, as your jab to get into KO range for your shotgun. All right, next thing I'm gonna talk about is how do I approach a boss lab when people are already doing the boss? Like you can hear, somebody is throwing lanterns, destroying lanterns in the layer. I know people are there, but it's not that bad because when people are doing the boss, they're usually occupied with the boss fight. And you can use that time to like get as close to the layer as possible to be then again in shotgun range. I think you kind of see the motive here or like the red line. Always get as close to your enemy as possible to use your shotgun. That's the whole point of playing shotgun. Like you saw, I was AFK for a little second, I had to like alt tap and fix something for my stream. But I went on the roof just to get a quick overview if somebody is like in between me and the layer. I didn't spot anyone. So I immediately start running over, get into shotgun range, and see if I can, you know, make some magic work here. Open the layer, maybe get like a kill while they're doing the boss. Can't really get into one tap range here, so I don't shoot at that person. What I'm gonna do here is very tricky, I use my sticky bomb to throw it on top and climb the ladder afterwards. The sticky bomb is not gonna explode on time to like damage me, but it's gonna make everyone move away because I think it's a dynamite. So it kinda like, you know, enabled me to get even deeper into the compound get into shotgun range. Now I'm kind of like in the middle, I know I'm here, but now I'm already in a position where I want to be, right? I'm like in shotgun range. That's like, you know, the perfect scenario. Now I'm just playing off sound, seeing if I can, you know, get like an entry kill here. They don't know I have a shotgun yet, so always try to like not reveal that you have a shotgun until you are in a position where you can get a kill. Now I hear somebody approaching from the outside. Get like an insane Romero one tap. Ooh, the pillar there. Actually crazy. He takes me as well, I heal up. But I hear that there's somebody else. So I immediately start repicking with my pistol here. Yes, I have a dodge, but you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Get another kill here. I hear that the last person is outside as well, so I immediately get into shotgun range and finish the whole team. It's like textbook gameplay here, but 
You see what I mean? Like when people are doing the boss already, just start getting into range, just start pushing the layer and get into one tap range. You know, that's the hardest part about playing shotgun. If you can avoid getting into like 60, 70 meter range fights, it's always worth taking the risk and just running at the layer. Now, next game, we will talk about how to third party boss layer fights overall. Since we are, that was my strategy, very boss layer objective focused, we will end up in a lot of fights around boss layers. No surprise, surprise. Can I get what you're looking for? But yeah, we're approaching the boss layer here. And we hear that there are two teams fighting already, so I'm kind of like rotating around the compound and see from where I can make my entry happen. Again, you know, until you're in shotgun range, just run around with your pistol. What I'm doing here is they don't know of my position yet, so I'm just rotating around and trying to like find an entry and maybe get a pick on somebody who is not aware of me yet. Overall, when approaching banishes, it's probably a good idea if you hear other teams close by to wait a little bit, see what happens and don't immediately start sieging the layer unless you have like, you know, get an entry kill because you don't want to be stuck outside the windows trying to like make your shotgun work and then get pinched in the middle of two teams. So if possible, try to like wait for another team to do the move as a solo player. That will make your life 10 times easier. I'm struggling a little bit here. I thought I could vote that. I'm pretty sure you were able to in the past, but I couldn't find the vote spot. So I just give up and start voting normally into the compound. I heard somebody die. So right now is the perfect time to just run in there and get a kill. Here, like you saw, I caught somebody completely off guard. After I get the kill, I immediately start, you know, rotating again. I don't want to stay in the same position here. As a shotgun player, staying on the move is basically the secret formula. The more people you can like catch off guard and one tap, the better. If you hold the angle and they know of your position, they will not go there, you know? They know they have a shotgun already. Here, I open the window, get another unsuspecting kill on the blue shirt here. From there, I'm just gonna continue snowballing. I know multiple people have died, so I just go into the layer. I hear footsteps upstairs. Now I hear them drop, so I just adjust my goal or where I wanna push here. Check every corner, check to the right. I don't know how she didn't hear me there, but we get another kill. I hear that she ran outside close to the metal gate. It was to lose Mala's teammate, I get another shotgun. Clear up the whole fight here, but you saw, I stayed quiet until the very moment from where I could like start snowballing. It's like a good habit as a shotgun player to take things a little bit slow until you get your initial kill and then turn up the aggression the more kills you get, you know? After the first kill, you saw I like instantly started rotating, looking for another kill. Especially when, you know, two teams are fighting, I abused the chaos to get the blue shirt. Like you see here, she was completely unaware. But after I got the blue shirt, I'm not holding angles. I'm abusing the fact that I have a shotgun, I play confident and continue pushing. Especially when I kill someone's teammates, they're gonna, you know, do callouts in Discord, which will sometimes just completely silent footsteps you know maybe the prodigal daughter didn't hear me because the blue shirt was like hey there's a guy pushing with a shotgun help like turn around boom i get the prodigal daughter as well now i have a good example on how i like to defend boss layers i like to play it fairly aggressive but i make great use of the layer in itself to like isolate my enemies i heard an enemy team approaching so i like went outside to get like the jump on someone maybe. Sometimes it's a great idea, especially in those like tiny compounds like Testimonial Church, where you can like easily go back into the layer to just look a little bit, you know, 10, 15 meters outside the layer because people are like more focused on the layer itself and they might not be expecting you to like hold an off angle. Sadly in this case it didn't work out. I got lucky that I survived, got tagged by Flechette. Once I revealed my position, I immediately start falling back to the layer. I heal up here. I know that they are pushing, so I'm just like getting cover and getting ready to shotgun somebody. Quite often it's a great idea to even prioritize killing someone like that before healing. And this time I had to heal because I was bleeding. But you get the idea. Now that I got my initial kill, I'm just gonna play offset for a second. I'm closing the barricaded door again. Like minimize the amount of angles I can peek from. 
I'm gonna burn the teammate just to make them come closer. I don't think that burn will do anything. I'm not gonna reburn. It's just for them to like get closer to the layer, you know? Kinda like get into shotgun range. Now I hear somebody like outside my door. He's like shooting with a windfield. I'm using Lightfoot here for anyone wondering what I'm doing here. I'm like crouch walking that makes almost no noise. And this jumping thing here, this frog leaping makes zero noise. There's like a 1.5 second internal cooldown between jumps or on Lightfoot itself. But by doing that here, I expected because I didn't do anything, they're gonna go for a necro here. So I hold, held the angle. A little bit bad timing here, but got the kill anyways. But overall, Lightfoot, especially while defending boss layers or like in compound fights, like we saw there, can sometimes give you the advantage over your enemies. Now I hear that they busted my door down, so I have to deal with that. Again, I'm gonna like crouch walk, abuse Lightfoot, get really close, and I get lucky that I didn't die, but again, I just jump out of the layer, get my kill, and immediately fall back. Now I know that they have Necromancer, and I know that guy was not the Necromancer person, because I would have heard Darkseid. I kinda like expect him to go for another Necro on his teammate. I was right about that. I mean, please start rotating for the other body in case of a Necro. I hear him standing there. Abuse the Hunt Audio. Hunt Audio is kind of like Warhack. Get an insane headshot here. But, you know, sometimes it's all about like reading your opponents, especially when they have Necromancer. If they Necro once, they will Necro again. So, just when defending layers, play around the layer a little bit. When you get a kill, play around the kill if possible. You know, bait them with a burn. Do whatever. Just don't let them like mentally reset. If you can, you know, avoid them getting revives. I'm pretty sure if they would have gotten that revive off here successfully on their teammates, they would have backed off and just waited for me to like, you know, come outside and like take the fight at a ranged battle. Okay, now we have another example here, like how I defend layers, just to give you a different perspective. I banish the boss in fishery, two teams are fighting towards testimonial and then I get third partied or attacked by another team at my boss layer. Also, I will showcase you that it's sometimes the best idea to just dip out of a fight if it's like really bad for you as a shotgun player. There's no shame in, you know, running away as a solo when people just want to make your life as miserable as possible. I had banished already, so I'm kind of looking if I can get like, you know, a cheeky kill here. I get kind of lucky that she missed her shot, like the weird sister. I don't know on what team she was. But again, what I'm doing here, I got a random kill on somebody who, I don't know, whose teammate she is, where her teammates are. So immediately going for the burn, not because I want to like burn her out, just to make people to come closer to me. That's usually, you know, a great way to make people push you because, you know, most teammates don't want their teammate to like go out like that. So they're gonna push, either they're gonna push for a choke bomb or whatever. Right now I'm just waiting for them to come closer. No reason to like take too much of a risk here. If she has good teammates, they will push. I kind of see that nobody is coming, but I hear a team approaching on the other side, like you saw there, I wig it for my shant. So I immediately start falling back and I start defending my layer. I know they're by the sliding door, so I'm just waiting here. I miss my Romero shot, but now they know what angle I'm holding. So I immediately start pushing out of another exit and I get like a pick here. I got lucky because I caught me an and didn't hear me, but you never re pick the same angle twice, even as a shotgun player, because they might have a shotgun themselves. Now I just jump peek the last person. I think he was confused by Audible because he was on the stairs. He couldn't really tell where I was. But like we saw here, I peeked one door where they were pushing. Immediately start peeking another angle that is also in shotgun range. Get a kill. And then just start snowballing from there. Always try to be as unpredictable as possible, if that makes sense. Sometimes when vanishing, it pays off to just play the layer and wait for somebody to eventually push. Especially when there's a lot of fighting happening around your layer already. Sometimes people are like, oh damn, we can, you know, just take the layer and then surprise, there you are with your shotgun. Also, like I said earlier, I'm gonna skip here real quick just to show you guys what I had to deal with. Like you see here, I'm doing a scan. The last team is so far out that I don't even want to go out there because it's like very disadvantageous for me as a shotgun player. So I shake the map, I saw that, like, no, uh, I, I shake the map, I saw that 
This is other bounty team came over, they didn't pick up their bounty. I just ran over there, picked up that bounty, got out with a double bounty, easy money. Um, don't let rifle players bait you into like fighting outside of compound if it's avoidable. If people play like that, just turn the other way and leave. No point of entertaining the playstyle. Okay, for the last game, I'm gonna try to combine everything. This game is kinda perfect for that. But it's gonna be a full match commentary. Just so you guys get an understanding with all those aspects that I just showed you in a whole match. Like actually the whole match, gonna skip through some parts here, but just to see my strategy, how I usually play as well. I just spawn in here, we spawned at the fort on this R. I grab my first clue here, instantly start checking the cutout, see like oh, it's gonna be like a middle compound, so I just move on. I have conduit like you see, I have like infinite stamina now, instantly run over to the prison, get my second clue here. I'm actually really fast, you saw like barely didn't lose many like many seconds or any seconds on my conduit. Get my third clue here in Weeping. <laughs> Sorry, I just forgot the name real quick. See that the banishment is happening. Fishery a species up here real quick. Now I do hear some gunshots in fishery, that means a team got there before me. Unfortunate, but that does happen. All I do now here is like Rotate as fast as possible into the compound while maintaining hard cover with the bushes here. I just don't want to get into the fight here if that makes sense. Now I'm gonna continue slowly approaching the layer here. Multiple gunshots. I know that there are at least two teams in there. Like earlier when we third partied Hemlock, I'm gonna slowly walk up here and see if I can get a successful third party going. Jump a little bit with Lightfoot again. Walk up here. Here's somebody to my left getting tagged. So I just pull up my new army and get like the last hit on them. Very nice. And then I immediately start pushing the layer, especially on bosses like Butcher or Spider. It can be very beneficial to just run through the layer because they usually don't attack you as much as other bosses do. So you can just like walk through it. And like here, you know, catch somebody off guard. Sadly I didn't get the kill, but they didn't kill me either, so we just continue. Now that I'm healed up, I'm gonna try to like peek from a different angle. I jump down those pipes here onto the little supporting beam there. Jump down. I get lucky that I didn't get killed by the cracks there. But I hear them above me walking around. I don't wanna like destroy the trap here to immediately give away my position. So I'm just holding that for a second and see if somebody, you know, eventually comes down there. Sometimes it's not the worst idea to hold an angle for a second or two when people are close by. They don't. I did some the trap here, but. Even though we're holding the angle with fire rate, I could get two kills here. It's like, you know, like in the tier list earlier, like we're wrapping everything up here. Fire rate can be so beneficial when playing shotguns. I couldn't tell where the third was. He tags me, I run through the layer. And heal up. But again, I know what they're gonna do. They're gonna try to go for revives. They close the door here. They got two revives off, but I just re-kill them both. Again, with great fire rate. On this range, they had like probably 50 HP. I know the third one is somewhere, didn't know where exactly, but we got lucky here with the outside team, killed him, I get another kill on the upcoming crack team, then after that I immediately fall back, start reloading and preparing for the fight. Again, like you can see here, like running through the layer, nothing is really happening to me here, very beneficial in certain situations. Now that I got like a teammate down of assumingly the last team. I'm just gonna try to play around that. Try to deny the revive here. Push the body, walk around. Try to find the last person, or the last two people. Bump into the archaeologist here. Sadly didn't kill her, but now I'm gonna re peek here. And again, show off the insane fire rate that the terminus has. They got the revive off, but somebody flashed him. Oh, flashed himself. So I just push the revive. Get the recall with the red bell, you know, always try to make use of your environment. Again, we're in a 1v1. I'm poisoned though, so I have to fall back. Now we're gonna you know, kinda run out of ammo here. I'm just gonna swap over to long ammo because I know multiple people are down. Sometimes not the worst idea in the middle of a fight, especially when multiple people are downed already, to just swap your guns. Like you saw here, Mosen, just easy body tap. Now I can loot, I need heals. Sadly didn't get any, but you know, again, region shot value, you know, 
We are going full circle here. The region shot keeps me in the game. So I can just like idle here and wait for them to push me. Again, you know, sometimes it's just a good idea to hold the angle. Now, she got revived with the necro. Get another body tap here. I know where the last person is. So I'm in a 1v1 here and finish the fight. Overall, I think this really illustrated basically everything of this whole match illustrated how to like, you know, play efficiently as a shotgun player. Kind of summarized everything I showed you until here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.